I actually already designed this freaking thing that goes in the wings just to find out that guys don't actually go in here. It's just like an autonomous turret. Uh, and that was a play feature of the Lego sets that wasn't real. But I actually thought the seat turned out pretty cool. So I'll probably keep it around for something else. A bunch of the old stuff I had in there, gone. I started doing some of the huge reiterations that I was talking about before. And I began with the cockpit because I don't know if I really made it clear before, but figures didn't fit inside because I didn't realize how huge they were until after I was far too committed to other parts of the model to go back and change it. So they were just kind of sitting there with no leg. Mount up! And I didn't think that was very fun or very cool. So I started with the cockpits for a very particular reason, and that is that pretty much everything structurally here at the front needs to be built around them if they're going to fit minifigures. Seems pretty obvious, right? So they pretty much end up sitting right on this spine of the top part of the ship. Even though it's simple and becomes kind of hidden, I think it's pretty pleasing how snug you can fit a minifigure in there. You know, it's just kind of pleasant like that. And then look how just like slick the front of this glass fits right in between the, the like viewport thing. Nice. Close the window and improve audio quality, or leave it open because it's a good vibe. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it open. I managed to reduce the length of this front panel here by half a plate, which I didn't think was gonna be possible until I tried for 20 seconds, which allows for this piece, the, the, the very front of it, sort of the chin, to perfectly line up right there, which is something that was really irritating me before, is that these curved slopes didn't totally line up with the front, but got it sorted out. But now there's a separate problem in that when this is installed, this big top piece here, this doesn't fit. It needs more than like another brick um, of space in there. So my plan right now is to maybe try and shorten this a little bit. I wanna shorten it as little as possible because having as long of a hypotenuse here as possible is what's important for having as much stud connection as possible to the to the top spine. So you might have to do something kind of nifty or take a whole different approach. I actually had this right before and now it's screwed up. I just don't know why it wasn't working totally right. Uh, me being an idiot is the only thing giving these videos substance these days. But doesn't that just look so fire? There's just something so satisfying about compact designs. Yes, that is much more what I've been after this whole time.
Oh my god! This is gonna blow your guys' freaking minds. I figure the best way to demonstrate this is to just kind of walk through the assembly process. This is like the culmination of everything I've ever learned, bro. I am hyped. All right, so I've got all the pieces we're gonna need out. We're gonna start with the core piece, which I talked about earlier. I talked about shortening this, which is what this little uh, lime green slope here is for. So that luckily ended up working out, but I've made other modifications to it since then as well. And this is going to attach directly onto the top spine of the ship. And I'm gonna try and get a really good connection here, make sure all the studs are in as well as possible. Then we've got something that's a little bit weird, but it's definitely crucial to all of this working out, which is these like hinge straps. I don't really know how else to describe them, but basically they try to clamp everything down. So one's gonna clip on up here, and then the other is gonna clip onto this bar down here, which if you push it far enough this way, should give a pretty strong connection. I like these kinds of clips because they actually make, I think a pretty strong connection, which is what allows this to be useful at all because it locks this in this, you know, kind of arbitrary position. And then there's a similar one on the other side as well. This one just has to be a little bit longer. It goes on there like that. And then try to pull it as far as I can this way. So you can see it being stressed um, I'm trying to stress it as much as possible because that's what makes it so this is almost impossible to, to break off of here. Next we're going to attach this core section uh, to like the floor of the ship. Uh, so it sort of can sit right there temporarily. And then there's three different ways that this goes in. The first of which is this two by two plate here that clicks these studs together. Same thing on the other side as well. And then these little contraptions are just more redundancy in that spot because there's extra studs to work with, so, you know, might as well. But one up near the front is um, also really important. So that little yellow right there is part of the core. So this piece is just gonna cover those two things and really attach it into like the bottom spine of the ship. Next, I suppose we can stick this on. I gotta do a little bit of color replacement there to make all the visible parts white, but otherwise it's in working condition. And then we'll start clicking these front chin things on. I, I, I changed this around a little bit because I needed like a stud with a hole there because that's how the these things remain on these weird offsets. So then this thing on the left, I also added some studs with holes. And now the only thing that's left is to add all the side panels. This little bit of genius here at the front, I owe to fellow Rebelug member, James Legomania. I put a call out for help in the whips chat and he sent this little solution here with the bar and like the connector thing to get this thing attached here on the front. Super, super clean design. I'm so thankful for that. I couldn't figure it out. But this will start to click in here. It has lots of points of contact because uh, it's also extra redundant support. We do both sides. And then finally, the lower side panels, which just have some like little hinge plates on them. And those are gonna click into these bricks with studs on the sides that you can see visible, the yellow ones. This I just kinda go like that. And it pops in. And the other side. And finally, we just gotta add these like cannons at the front. And there we go, that's the new front assembly. I think it's about as good as I'll ever be able to get it. And I see no reason that I would ever need to change this, I hope. I think this will probably be a final, final design on this, on this build. This will be the part where I review what just happened in the video. Here's the thing. I haven't actually finished the video yet. I'm planning on editing it tonight so it can go up Wednesday morning, which is why I'm recording this earlier. However, the video didn't go up Wednesday morning. I want you to go bully me in the comments. So I've got an announcement. Episode two of the Rebelug Roundtable podcast, three years coming, has just come out on the Rebelug channel with the homies Danny, Caleb, and Nick in this episode where we talked about some different stuff, including a uh, 
virtual Zoom Lego convention uh, going on soon. Personally, my favorite part is that it's just a good excuse to talk to some major league people. Otherwise, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll have another one whenever. So, I'll see you guys later.